What's up everybody, I'm back again with another Lodo Tech tutorial and let's consider today's tutorial a lesson on something that you just shouldn't do. I've been a big fan of these HP Thin clients. I picked these up really cheap off of eBay and I bought quite a bit of these uh, over the past year or so. I picked these up for about 15 bucks a piece and I did a video on these a while back giving five project ideas that you can use these for. And one of my viewers gave me the recommendation to try out Batocera. It's a retro game platform built for various computers. Now I tried RetroPie in the past on a Raspberry Pi 3 and it worked out pretty good. When you get into the uh, 3D games like N64 and PS1 and things like that, that's when the performance really starts to fall behind. And I expected the performance from these machines to be about the same as what you would get from a Raspberry Pi 3. But I couldn't have been more wrong. And stick around and I'm going to show you exactly why this was an epic failure. As far as what I used in this project, the parts list is as follows. I have the HP Thin Client itself, an HDMI cable, a very generic SNES knockoff USB controller, a 16 gig flash drive, a DVI to HDMI adapter, a USB mouse and keyboard, and of course, the monitor, not pictured here, that I'll view everything on. All right, so I'm gonna head over to batocera.org. I'm gonna click this blue button right here, get batocera.linux 5.25, and I'm gonna choose old desktop slash laptop. That's what this thing is. This thin client has an x86 processor, so this is what I wanna download gonna save that and I'm gonna use Belina Etcher to burn that image to a flash drive you can get Etcher at Belina.io slash Etcher alright so now that our image is finished downloading I'm gonna open Belina Etcher I'm gonna select the image that we just downloaded I'm going to select the target USB and you want to be really careful here that you don't select the wrong USB because what it's going to do is it's going to overwrite everything on that disk. It's going to completely wipe it out. So if you have files on that USB stick that you want to keep, make sure that you back them up first. The USB disk that I want to use is this SanDisk Cruiser Glide, Drive F, and Flash. It will take a few minutes for this USB stick to flash. Just wait it out and be patient. Now is a good time to hit that subscribe button. Now that Etcher has finished burning our image, we can eject that USB stick plug it into our thin client, boot up the thin client, and see how it performs. I'm going to speed up the video here so as not to bore you, but the entire boot up process takes about a minute and a half. Now that we've booted, one of the first things that I've noticed is that there is no audio coming from the DisplayPort adapter through the HDMI output. However, there is audio coming from the built-in speaker of the thin client itself, and I did check and confirmed there is audio coming from the headphone jack as well. I was surprised to find that Batocera comes with a port of Kodi. And I use Kodi a lot, so I wanted to see what kind of video playback performance we get from this port of Kodi on this particular machine. Playing video across the network from a Linux media server using NFS as the sharing protocol, I found that watching 1080 video on this little device is just impossible. It's choppy and it just doesn't play back very well at all. Giving 720 a try, it's watchable. It's not the worst video I've ever seen, but definitely not the best either. If you have nothing else to watch your media on, this device will be okay, provided that none of your media is over 1280 by 720 in resolution. I didn't test watching any media over an SMB share, so keep in mind that your video playback could be even worse under that protocol. So now we'll get into some game testing, and the results, unfortunately, are less than impressive. I loaded up some classic Kong, and ugh, it feels like Mario's running in concrete shoes. So I gave Super Mario All-Stars a try, and it feels like every level is just being played underwater, also with ear bleeding audio. And though I didn't have any expectations of any kind of playable results, I did want to be thorough, and I loaded up a PSX game. 
in this case, Tekken 3. It froze the system and I had to do a hard reboot. To make sure all of my bases were covered, and to see if I could get any more performance at all out of this thin client, I decided to do a permanent install of Batocera to a solid state hard drive in this machine. This should be a faster hard drive, and I wanted to see if it would make any difference at all. At this point, I would take any performance boosts that I can get. Doing the permanent install takes quite a while. It appears that the installer connects to a downloader, and the entire process took about a half an hour. After the entire process completed, I booted into the new install, and I used Batocera's built-in SMB server to drop some games into their respective console directories. The results were essentially the same. In my former set of tests, I did not test any NES games. But here I loaded up the original Super Mario Bros. Unfortunately, it doesn't play any better than the SNES games that I tried earlier. Everything feels sloshy and weighted down, and when going back and giving the same SNES games a try, this solid state hard drive has not made any difference at all. As far as PSX goes, Tekken 3 crashed the system again, and here I loaded up Doom 64. Doom plays on everything, so I expected that at least something would be playable. Well, not here. This is unplayable. So that's it. Not a very good use for these thin clients. Now, I don't want to come across like I'm knocking these machines at all, and I don't want to come across like I'm knocking Batocera. Basically, those are two great tastes that do not taste great together. These things have been great for using them as Linux-based web servers. They've been fantastic torrent, uh, sonar, radar, um, SMB, NFS servers, that kind of thing. But when it comes to emulating games, run, run far away from these things. Not a good use for them. So many better uses somewhere else. Now all of this being said, I am not a video gamer. I like video games, but I don't play video games very often. And I especially don't tinker with retro machines and retro emulators, things like that very much. So there is a very high potential that I didn't get the settings right or that I could have optimized my settings different in that. If I did something wrong in this video, leave a comment below, let me know, because that is quite the possibility. That being said, if you want to support my work, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, it really helps the channel grow. And let me know if there's anything that you would like to see as far as tech reviews or tech tutorials in the future. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.